Hi everyone, today we'll take a look at solving log equations. So before I get started, solving with log equations is, is a fairly straightforward process, okay? Essentially, you're going to be following the same steps every time, okay? So first, let me know if you want, I can even write it down, so that's not an issue, right? So first is you're going to, you know, uh, bring the like terms together, right? So um, let me just re rewrite this bring so what i'm going to write is number one bring the like terms together bring the like terms together all right that's the first thing you want to do all right then you just want to undo the exponents it's, it's a very much a two-step process right then you want to undo the uh log function sorry let me just read this is so you want to you want to you know get in the exponent form which is like the opposite of the log form right so undo the log function right and essentially you know you're only going to use these steps for the non calculator section right so paper one right for paper two you have a calculator you can always put you know you can always put the two log functions in um in the calculator plot it out find the find the intersection points and then you know those are your those are the values uh or those are the solutions of your equation right but oftentimes such log equations will come in paper one they'll be for five marks six marks or right? not more than six and they'll just they'll just they're just testing your proper log you know log properties and whether you know you remember them and you know and you know how to apply them all right, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to be focusing on questions that you should be able to do without a calculator so that, that you get in the habit of, you know, using the properties, recalling the properties again. Again, I'm only going to do a handful, maybe like five or six, right? But that doesn't mean, you know, just because I've been, I've done those questions, that doesn't mean, you know, all right, so these are the only type of questions that can come in um, in your paper one, right? A lot of you know wild stuff can appear you might have you know a log function you know on the left hand side and then maybe some trig variation on the right hand side. i'm just making it up as i go but you can right as long as there's some pattern of canceling things out you will you will find you can find something complicated and again if it's complicated it's going to affect everyone so it's not just you you don't have to you know worry about and be scared about oh my god it's it's a, it's a, a hard question might come no it's okay right uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's going to face the difficulty of, you know, solving that question. Maybe instead of spending five minutes, you're going to spend like, you know, 10 minutes. It's okay. It doesn't matter. But just, I'm just telling you, just don't, don't restrict yourself to these five questions that I'm going to, you know, explain, right? You, you should, you know, you should look at past papers. You should look at more textbook questions for sure. All right. So um, let's get started with the first question. All right. So the first question we have is log X minus four is equal to two. So remember what I told you, if there's no base written, right, there's no mention of any base, we assume it to be log base 10. So we're going to say this is log base 10, x minus 4 is equal to 2, right? It's the same thing, right? This is something I mentioned in my previous video, you can check it out later. Um, I've even put a timestamp so you can see it, right? So anyways, so now we just have to undo the log function, right? There are no like terms that we have to combine. So let's just undo the log function. So we know this is a log is an exponent. So we can say 10 raised to the power two gives us X minus four, right? So let's do that. So we get 10 raised to the power two is equal to X minus four. This is a hundred and then we have plus four, right? So hundred plus four, right? is equal to x so x is equal to 104 104 right we can check our answer again so we get 104 minus uh 4 which is 100 log base 100 uh log log base 10 100 is equal to 2 so we can always check our answer it's it's you know it's very fairly quick i mean if you have a, if you have a complicated uh, you know equation which you might spend a lot of time in simplifying and all you can always you know for your sake, when you're practicing, to, uh, you can use your calculator or you can go on Desmos and, you know, plot two functions and then see their intersection point. That's also, uh, you know, a very, very simple, straightforward method, right? You can use that as well. 
All right, let's look at the next question now. All right, again, question two is very much like question one, except instead of a base 10, we have a base 16. Not, not doesn't matter. We apply the same process. We undo it. So we can say 16 raised to the power half is equal to x, right? So 16 raised to the power half is equal to x, right? So this is like the same thing as saying square root of 16, right? If you didn't know, now you know, right? So just, just uh, you know, if you say if you have raised to the power half, it's square root. If it's raised to the power one third, it's a cube root. Right, it's the same thing. They're writing. Uh, it's you know, it's uh, it's another way of you know writing this, right? So th these two mean the same thing. So it might be new to some people, but um, I hope it's clear now. So now we have you know square root of sixteen. So now we have two possible solutions actually. So we have um, x is equal to plus or minus four, right? So now we don't stop here. We gotta check our answer. Right. So let's take, you know, checking our answer for log uh, for when x is equal to four. Right. So we have log base 16, four. Right. That gives us a half. So sides are matching. However, log base 16 minus four is not equal to half. Right. It's not equal to half. And you know why? Because this part, right, anything inside here must be greater than zero can't even be equal to zero. In, in radical functions, it could be uh, equal to zero, but in, in log functions, this has to be greater than zero. So actually our only solution, right? So answer, or I can say, so our answer will be basically X is equal to four only, right? That's gonna be our final answer, not minus four, right? So we're not to ignore minus four, right? So we can think of it, think of it as, an, as an extraneous solution. Right. Sometimes you might even uh, hear that word by your teacher or in the textbook or even in the exam paper. So these are some just some um, things that I just want you to be familiar with as you go along. Again, we have a very similar thing here. Ln means natural log. So it means log base E. Right. E is constant 2.71. It's an irrational number. So we have log base E x squared is equal to 16, right? All right, so let's expand this. So we know e raised to the power 16 is equal to x squared, right? Very simple, very straightforward. Now we got to solve for x. So what I can do, is, so the way to, you know, solve for x at this point, right, is what I have to do is I have to basically do the square root, right? The opposite of square is a square root or raising to the power half, right? So if I raise both sides to the half power, or you know what, let me do it in the next line. So I won't do it here. I'll do it. E raised to the power 16 raised to the power half is equal to X squared raised to the power half. Remember, it's an equation. So whatever I do to one side, I have to repeat it on the other side. So I raised to the power half both sides, right? So I'm going to get E raised to the power 4 is equal to x, all right? Now here, here, remember, when we take the square root of something, you know, if it's a square root of 100, right? We always get two solutions, plus or minus 10, right? Then we decide whether to, you know, um, include minus 10 as an answer or not, but we always get two solutions, right? So similarly here, we're gonna get two solutions here as well, plus or minus e raised to the power of four. Okay, now we're gonna have to decide whether negative e raised to the power of four is even acceptable. Um, you know, in the previous question, it wasn't, but here, is it acceptable, right? And again, it is not, okay? It is not. Because if you look at this function, right? If you look at this function, what you're gonna, you can, re, re, you can, you know, rewrite this function as two ln x is equal to 16, all right? You can do this. So, when you do that, right, let me just, you know, and I've made a small error here. I just realized, I'm so sorry, but it's supposed to be e raised to the power eight. Okay, so now ln x is equal to eight, right? I divided both sides by, um, I divided both sides by two, so I get this. Then this is, you know, e raised to the power eight is equal to x, all right? So again, our answer right? Our answer is only x is equal to e raised to the power 8, right? And, you know, if you guys want, you know, better clarity, right? What you can do is you can plot this function, 
I highly recommend take your TI-84 or open Desmos on your computer and plot this function. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because what happens is the log function unfolds in this med, right? So only positive values of X are being considered here, all right? Positive values of X are being considered here. So any negative value will not be considered. It's, it's that simple, all right? So negative E raised to the power 8 will not even be in contention for an answer because the log function is opening this way, right? The general log function, you know, ln X is equal to 8. It'll always open in this manner, in some, you know, in a similar, you know, uh, in a similar shape. Obviously, values, exact values, will be different for every value of x because it's a, it's a log, it's a natural log. But you know, you can, you do, you do understand the general function. Again, I'll be explaining um, graphing log functions in the next video, so it's okay if you're not, if you're a little hazy about it. Uh, if you've learned it at school or whatever, that's great. But yeah, okay. So let's go to the next question now. All right. So now we have, you know, what looks like a proper equation, right? Much, much more uh, complex than the previous three questions we solved, right? Doesn't matter. We applied the same two-step process, right? First step is combine all the like terms or log functions with the same base, right? That Those are the only log functions that we can combine, right? So let's go ahead and do that, right? So in the right-hand side, we can see two different log functions. Let's combine them. You know, if we have the same base, and if you're adding two functions, it's like multiplying x and 6 together. So if we simplify this, we're going to have log base 2, x squared plus 8, right, is equal to, right, is equal to log base 2 times 6x, right? We, not, I'm just using the log properties. That's it, right? Now, now I'm going to show you two uh, conceptual approaches right here. Okay, so what now to get rid of the log function? Right now I've combined. Now I can even combine these two functions as well, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave as leave it as it is. Right. So I'll I'll show you every step of the way. I'll, every I'll sorry I'll show you every variation of how to tackle this question. Right. It's not that complicated. I'll show you every variation, and you'll probably understand every variation as well. If you if you know your log properties. If you're yet to revise your log properties, just keep them out with you, you know, on a piece of paper. So as I'm explaining, you can refer to them so you're not lost at, at all, right? So what I'm going to do is, you know, at this point, I can, I'm going to rewrite this thing right here before. And I'm going to write, write it really quickly. So I'm going to have like this, right? 6, 6. Now, if you have, you know, RHS is equal to LHS and or something like that. And um, it's like it's in this form, right? When you have it simplified to two log functions of the same base, you can simply just cancel the bases. And what you're going to be left with is x, x squared plus 8 is equal to 6x. And then you can solve it like a normal quadratic, right? Like, I mean, it's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. I can see two factors, 4 and 2. So I'm going to write x minus 2 and x minus 4 is equal to 0, right? And I'm going to get x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 4, right? That's it. That's my final solution, right? Now, the other way, right? So this was, you know, part one. So the other way you can do is you can, you see this 2, right? It's a, it's raised to, it's raised, it is a base 2, right? So I'm going to use a base 2 and raise this entire log as an exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 2 raised to the power log base 2, x squared plus 8. This is a more conceptual approach. This was a more of a shortcut and just a, just a, you know, a way it just exists, right? But this is the more of a conceptual approach, which I, you know, which is important also to show, right? So log base 2, uh, is the, uh, you know, raised to power all of this, or 2 raised to power log base 2, whatever, all this. And similarly, 2, because if I'm going to do use 2 here, I have to use a 2 here, right? It's an equation. I have to follow the rules of equations. So I'm going to have log base 2, 6x here, right? Now, if you remember a property 2, sorry, uh, a raised to the power log base ax is equal to x. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to write x squared plus 8 is equal to 6x. And then, you know, I'm going to use this, right? Right? This is the conceptual approach. One other method, right? One other method that I can, you know, show you right here is... I have this. Now I'm going to bring this to the other side. So I'm going to have log base 2 x squared plus 8 
minus log base 2, 6x is equal to 0. Now, if you remember, when you have log, log functions of the same base and they're subtracting and you're subtracting them, you're essentially di dividing what's inside. So you're going to have log base 2, x squared plus 8, all upon 6x is equal to 0. You can still expand this, right? 2 raised to the power 0. So you're going to have, right, you're going to have, um, sorry, you're going to have, I'll just do it down here. 2 raised to the power 0 is equal to x squared plus 8 all upon 6x. So this is equal to, you know, 1 is equal to x squared upon 8 is equal to 6x. So you get, you know, then you oh, then you get x squared plus 8 is equal to 6x if you multiply by 6x on both sides. So essentially you get the same thing again, right? My point is there are multiple ways. Ten, you know, essentially now that I've showed you how the concept works, I hope you're convinced and you can directly go using this, you know, just using the shortcut, canceling them out because you're trying to save time, right? Whether you show these steps or not, right? I, examiner will award you marks. You can just, you know, show that you can remove, you're essentially removing the function. You're removing the log function and just simplifying both sides of the equation, right? Let's look at one more question, which is quite similar to this. All right, let's look at this question. So we have an entire equation of log base 10, right? So it's the same base. Again, no, um, we don't have to worry about that too much, right? Now, what if, you know, one was a different log base, right? So what 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 would we do? What if we had, you know, log base um, 3, 2, something like this? Remember the property of this, right? We can always, you know, break it down to any any uh, base we want. So I can just write into the log base, I'm just going to write log. And we can write log 2 upon log 3, something like this. Or, you know, a better way, you know, if, if I want, you know, something to, you know, really work out really well. So I can, you know, say... Uh, log base 100 to right like this and then I can say log base log 2 log base 10 basically and then log 100 so I basically have this is 2 right so I can say log base 2 upon 2 sorry log 2 upon 2 right so again you should also be able to separate it like this according you know uh, you can use any base, right? I hear I use base 10 because the entire equation is in base 10. If it was a natural log, I'd use a natural log, right? I could write ln2 upon ln 100, right? I'm just showing you multiple ways of, way, you know, things that can that can occur. This is a very much a possibility. Although the question that I have, you know, it's a very straightforward same base. So it's, it's very simple, right? It, does, it doesn't require that much effort. But I'm just telling you for future references. All right, one more thing I want to mention is if it's a paper one, right, examiners will expect you to answer in exact form. So maybe if, if x is equal to, you know, like we had e raised to power 4, examiner wants you to keep it that way. They don't want, you know, 2.71 raised to power 4, whatever it is. And it's like it's close to, you know, 3, so it could be, you know, you know maybe like 75 or something, right? They don't want you to do that. Right? They don't want 75 point something, 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 or 70 point something, something, something. They wanted it E raised to power 4. If this is the exact form, keep it in that. If it's a radical answer, keep it in radical. Right? Whatever it is, keep it as it is, right? Because that is the exact form. Anyways, let's get started with this question. So the base is the same. So it's just time to combine uh, like terms, right? And then undo the exponent. So if we're subtracting, we're dividing. If we're adding, we're multiplying. So let's just focus on these two first, right? So if I'm, you know, subtracting i'm just dividing so i can write this as 7 upon 4x plus 5 plus log 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 right that's it so now i'm going to multiply this i'm going to write 7 upon 2x minus 3 all right let me just read that this it's a little messy so 2x minus 3 all upon 4x plus 5 right and this is inside this goes inside the log base function so it's equal to zero. So I can, you know, this is base 10. So 10 raised to the power zero is one, right? So one is equal to seven times two X minus three, all upon four X plus five. Um, I'm just gonna expand this really quickly. It's, it's you know, it's pretty straightforward now. Four X minus 21 is equal to four X, 14 X, sorry, 14 X minus 21 is equal to four X plus five. So I'm gonna get, 10x is equal to 
uh, 26, right? And I'm going to get 2.6, right? Here, I'm going to use a decimal because it's not an irrational number, right? I can, keep, I can put it in fractions as well. I can put 26 by 10, which will give me 13 by 5. I can do that, but assuming that I've made no, um, assuming that I've essentially made, you know, uh, no uh, calculation mistakes, let me just check it really quickly. Uh, 7 times 2x minus 3, so I get 14x minus 21 is equal to 4x plus 5. So yeah, I, I don't think I have made, if you have, if I have, I apologize, I don't, it doesn't look like I have anywhere. So yeah. So again, a very straightforward base question. Let's look at, you know, one last question. All right, so this is our final question for today. And um, I want you to try this on your own, all right? Just give it a try, pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so before we get started, let me just tell you one thing, right? Log x4 is not equal to log x raised to the power 4. Okay, they're not the same. So you can't just simplify this down and then equate each, equate them to each other. No, that's not right. All right. So there's gonna be a step by step process. You know what? No, let me just keep this, right? Because so I'm gonna start this. So just you know it's important. Okay, so let's get started. So now I know I have I have this as log base x raised to the power four, right? So let's try to get this part uh, in the same, you know, format. Okay, so I can rewrite this as, let me just move an arrow. So I can rewrite this as a times log base x is equal to log x raised to the power of 4. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to make a simple substitution just to keep it easy on my eye. I'm going to say let um, t, right? So I'm going to rewrite this, sorry. So let uh, t is equal to log base 10x, right? So if I do that, what I'm going to have is 8t is equal to t to the power 4, okay? So now I'm going to write this as t to the power 4 minus 8t, right? So I'm going to have, what I'm going to have is t, if I factorize out t, I'm going to have uh, t cubed minus 8 is equal to 0, all right, that's what I'm going to have. So now, now what I get is t is equal to zero and t cube minus t cube is equal to eight. So here t is equal to two and t is equal to zero. Now that's on my final answer. Remember, I made a substitution, right? I made a substitution. So if zero is equal to log x, right? So x is equal to 1. Remember, 10 raised to the power of 0. So x is equal to 1. Here, 2 is equal to log x, right? So like this, right? So I'm going to have 100, okay? 100 is equal to x, right? So now I'm going to check my answers again, right? So if I put a hundred here, right, it's fine. Nothing's gonna, it won't, you know, it won't make it a negative, right? So this is okay. This is also okay. So I can say that X is equal to one and X equal to hundred are both my solutions in this answer, right? So this is how you were supposed to unfold this question, not, you know, just jump here and then, you know, solve it. So what would have happened here is you would have had two solutions. X is equal to zero. Had you, had you gone by this approach, you would have gotten X is equal to zero and X is equal to one, right? This is correct. This is incorrect, right? You can't just do that, right? Because this is not the same, right? I never mentioned it. If you look at it, I never mentioned this property or anything, right? As a shortcut or anything. You have to follow the concept. If you're ever in doubt, right? Let me just, you know, point it out. If you're ever in doubt of any log based function, right? break it apart right again i used a very logical method here i didn't you i didn't do some rocket science or jump any step right i even made a substitution just to make things easy on the eye right i did that so you don't face any issues later on right and it's important you, substitution is a very very you know important method that can help you a lot right so just be aware that you can always use that you know don't be afraid not to use it again these are just, you know, some things that might help you when you're writing a paper, you know, when you're, you know, crunched for time and all of them, just to be aware. 
But yeah, well, this is the final question for today. And um, I seriously hope you do, you do more questions, right? I did. I tried my best in getting, you know, a few questions, different questions, whether they were lengthy. However, I did not um, use a question. I did, not, I did not, you know, share a question which has mixed bases, right? So look for those questions, you know, in, in your uh, exam pay, past papers and look at the solutions of them and how see how they break them apart. Again, it's a paper one question, so it will never be no f too complicated because they expect you to do them within five minutes and, you know, and um, not, not waste too much time on it. They just want to see, they just want to test you on your proper knowledge of your properties. And if you know them, right, solving any question in solving any log equation questions is a piece of cake because it's just about manipulating um, and breaking apart log functions to satisfy the conditions so you can add the like terms and then undo the log function into an exploit, right? That That's all there it is, right? So with that, um, this ends today's video and today's tutorial. So in the next video, we'll take a look at log uh, plotting and graphing or plotting or graphing log functions. So this is all for today and I'll see you the next one. Bye-bye.